A subform is inserting a form within another form. For example, I have my customer's main form, and then I have the field's customer ID, customer name, and the employee who made the sale. The problem is, is what sales? I want to be able to view all the sales of the products we sold to this customer star attempts, including the transaction date, order ID, and so forth. But the problem I run into with forms is that they can only be based upon one table, unless I base it upon a query. I'll go ahead and right click on this query and go to the design view because queries can be based upon one or more tables as long as they're related. And you can see here that I've got relationships between the book projects, the book sales, and the billing info where once related either permanently from the relationship screen or as temporary data joins here as we discussed in previous training videos I can double click and add all their fields down below and these fields will be viewable within my form here again as long as that form is based upon this query. I'll go ahead and right click and close out of that query or I can insert a subform here and base that upon another table but the caveat when you insert a subform is that you want to make sure that the forms are linked so all the records displayed in the subform and I would insert that subform down below here are related to the current record displayed in the main form. So like star temps, when I have that selected or I go to the third record, Happy Town Play World, down below, I want to be able to see in the subform based upon the book sales table its related records, the sales that we made to Happy Town Play World, the transaction date, what they purchased, uh, the quantity, and so on. For example, the customer table. We have the customer ID, customer name, salesperson. We got those three fields already available in the customer main form. I don't have the address and I probably should add that, especially when it comes to creating new clients, but I'll leave it alone for now. And in the book sales table, when I open that up, we have the sales date, the part number, what, what book they purchased, customer ID, and how many that were sold. So I want to be able to insert that. Now how do I relate these tables together? As you recall in the previous training videos on relationships, you come up here to the database tools tab, click on the relationships button, come in the screen, and there's the book sales table and the customer table, and they're related. They have the customer ID with the primary key related to the foreign key customer ID field, and it's called the foreign key because this field makes it a foreign key when it relates to another field that's the primary key in another table. And as we talked about, they have the same data type, customer ID, customer ID, and once we create that relationship one to many, meaning that I only want to have one customer ID for each customer. I don't want duplicate customer IDs for customers because then it gets confusing. So I can only have one customer ID that's going to be unique for each customer. We're over here in the book sales, I hope to have many customer IDs because that means that I have repeating customers. That means that this customer ID can be duplicated many times because maybe on January 1st they purchased 100 books, they came back, we have another order, they purchased 200, so that customer ID can be listed many times because maybe they purchased 10, 20, 30 times throughout a given year, a given decade, whatever. So, before you insert a subform, make sure that you have the relationship established between the tables. Now, if you don't, and you know, if it's deleted, but you still have the customer ID, the same data type to the customer ID in the customer table, that's fine, but you're going to have to work at it manually when you insert the subform. The wizard's going to make you do a little extra work, which is annoying to me, so it's just better if I have it automatically linked or related here. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So let me close out of the relationships, the book sales. Now, the book sales has the customer ID again, and that's the foreign key because it relates to a primary key, or we have it related, as you saw in the relationship table, to the customer ID here, the primary key. Go ahead and right-click and close, right-click and close. So now that we have this related, I can just go ahead and insert that table basically as a form or subform down below here that will relate to the records up above. To do that, just go ahead and right click on the tab here and go down to Design View. Come up here on the Design tab to the Controls group and click on the Subform Subreport because you can also create subreports in the Design View of your reports, which we cover in a later training video. So click on that, come down here, you get a little cross. Wherever you click on the grid, where that cross is, it's going to boom dump that subform, but first of all it's got a subform wizard. It's going to ask us a couple of questions to help us find the relationship between these two tables, or at least the table we want to pull in that this subform is going to be based upon, the book sales table here. So it says, okay, what data would you like to use for your subform? Well, the data is coming again. It's going to be based upon the book sales, and it's going to be the table, so it's selected here. I'll click Next and select that table from the drop-down list here, book sales, then what fields do I want to be available in that subform? Well, how about all of them, except maybe the customer ID? Well, you could say, whoa, wait a sec. That customer ID remembers the link field of the foreign key in the book sales table to the primary key, the customer ID in the customer table. See, here's the trick. 
As long as you have the relationships defined and established in that relationship screen that we just went over here in the database tools tab, even though you don't add it as an available field, behind the scenes access will, even though it's not available, say, well, I can see the relationship, the link, I'll, I'm fine with that, I'll go ahead and link them up. But if you don't have that relationship there and it's broken, you're going to have to work at it here and I'll show you that in just a second. So I can click next and boom, look what it does. It automatically detects that relationship between those two tables, the book sales table and the customer table, using the customer ID. More to the point here, it says, well, would you like to define which fields link your main form to the sub form? Yes, I want to choose from the list. I want access to define it for me, not define it my own. Because if I have to define it my own, then I have to click and find the customer ID in the main form to the customer ID in the sub form, which isn't listed here. Because remember, I didn't include it. So I want to choose from the list and access finds it for me, even though I didn't include it in the previous screen here. So it's selected. That's fine. Click next. Give it a name. Click finish and I'm done. Now if I click cancel and I show you the wrong way of doing it or the harder way as it were, I'm going to actually have to close out of my form here before I can come to my relationship screen and destroy this relationship, which I hate doing. I don't like destroying relationships, but when I delete it, we want to say yes, get rid of it. So if I come back here to my customer main form and go to the design view again, and I didn't have that relationship already set up, but remember, it's got the fields there that have the same data type, customer ID to customer ID. Then it's going to require a little bit extra work when I go to my sub form, sub report controls, and click it and dump it here. Again, we click next because we want to base it upon the sub form, the book sales. We're going to add all the records by clicking on the all button here. Now, if we try to get rid of the customer ID, because we don't have it automatically linked within the relationships table, Access is going to have a problem with that. We actually have to include the customer ID. Remember, it's going to take a little bit more work if we don't automatically have it linked because when I click Next, it can't automatically figure the link out for me. So I have to say, well, in the main form, it's the customer ID, which is the customer table. And on the sub form that I'm inserting based upon the book sales, well, it's not here. So I have to go back and double click and include the customer ID, which means, well, it can actually figure out the relationship, but also it's going to add the customer ID down into the sub form which to me doesn't make sense because I already have the customer ID up here on the main form. I don't want to see it twice, once up here, again down below. That's why I like it when in the relationship screen I have it automatically linked because then in the form wizard, the subform wizard, I don't have to include it. I can get rid of it and Access will still figure it out. But because I don't have it linked, well, I have to add it, click next, and then it finally figures it out. It says, okay, I can see the customer ID here. It can be linked in the customer ID in the book sales and the customer ID in the customer table, so click next, finish, we're done. I'm going to click cancel, hit undo, go back to my relationships, click and drag the customer ID to customer ID because I want to enforce it and have that permanent relationship, so let's get this done. When I go back to the design tab, click on the sub form, click on the grid to dump it, click next, again it's the book sales, add everything, but I don't want to see the customer ID. Again, duplicated down here when it's already on the main form here. And I can do that because I got that permanent relationship I just attached to in the other screen, the relationship screen. Click Next. It figures the link. Great. Click Next. Let's give it F sub. F is for form. Sub is for sub form. And then I can just say my, something like that, my book sales. You can see I already created the sub reports down below. F sub, my book sale. F sub, my book sales. If I try to give it a name that's the same as the ones I have down below, it's going to say you can't do it because it's a duplicate. In any case, F sub my book sales, click finish, and we're done. Let's take it for a test drive. I'm going to go ahead and right click and go to the form view. There we go. So, because they're related, remember the relationship we have, this sub form, the book sales, is linked to or has a relationship with the customer table, which is the main form. When I come down here in the main form and it bounce to the second record, it should update the home builder's customer name to its corresponding orders which it has to. It has order ID 28, 29, sales date, and well, you see how that's cut off. I want to go back to the design view here and just stretch that sub form out just a bit. To do that, you just want to hover over either the left mid handle or the right middle handle and click and drag that out. You know, hover it until you get that two-way arrow pointing in the opposite directions, then you can click and drag. Now, if you click off somewhere and you're trying to, let's say, click on and trying to get those handles to click and drag. Well, click outside of it, then go ahead and click once within it on the grid here, and then you get those handles again. Then click and drag those handles, stretch them out. Then let's take it for a test drive. Click on the View button. There, there we go. We can see all of the columns here. So when I can go ahead and toggle from record to record, Town Play World, it has like 11 records, 
or in this case they made 11 purchases here throughout the year different transaction dates uh, June 5th well June 5th they have the same transaction date but they were for different part numbers or book orders here then I can go to the next one now if at any time we have let's say this customer call it fall cleaning and say well I'd like to purchase uh, some more books that's fine just come to fall cleaning here and then come down here in the sub form go ahead and choose your transaction date whatever date it is then come over here and type in the part number now for me I know the name of the book I'm not really familiar with all these part numbers and stuff so in the training video on combo boxes we can actually turn this into a lookup field where all we have to do is click on the drop down arrow and look up let's say they wanted to order fall cleaning we have a book on um, spring cleaning well I don't know it by part number but if I change this into a combo box I can click on the drop down arrow find um, spring cleaning and its associated part number select it then the part number will be listed so that training video will be a good one to watch if you haven't done so already otherwise I just have to type it from memory I'm gonna cheat and just type the one above it here pretend they're ordering that one again because they liked it so much then let's say they ordered 50 shift enter to save it and there we go now they have three records now because I entered this record in here in the form remember these forms whether the main form or the sub form are based upon the tables so record 88 should be pulling and it's based upon the book sales let me double click scroll all the way down to the bottom and there's order ID 88 great go ahead and close out now if I'm entering in a new client or customer ID which if I click on the new record button down below of course this is a bad form design because I can't even tell where these boxes are it's been whitewashed but you'll make a better form than me the problem I'm running into is that if I enter in a new client I don't have their address so it probably would have been wise to my customer table add the address field city to my form so that way a new customer I just don't have their ID and their name but let's go ahead and do this and then you see where this little pencil is here it means in the main form it's writing it the moment I go ahead and hit the tab key and jump from the main form to the sub form automatically saves the customer here how do I know well if I go to the customer table that this main form is based upon I should see big G let me go ahead and open that up there it is but again because I don't have the fields in the form address city well you get the idea it's not going to be added here because I didn't see it to add it so it can be added to the table in any case I can go ahead and add a new record here sales date maybe today of course my order ID that field is an auto number field so the moment I start typing in my record here or get to a certain field it automatically brings up a number for me which is easier than having to remember let's see what order is this shift enter to save it so I have a new client with a new record in the book sales it's going to be 89 double click and open that up and scroll down and there's 89 keep in mind that if uh, some of these fields are crunched like that just be sure to move your pointer in between the two header columns in this case the sales date and the part number just double click really fast and it'll do a best fit as well remember it's a form the sub form within a main form here they act separately but they're linked so whatever I add in the main form up above will update in its table and then of course anything in the sub form will update to its corresponding table and these forms can also be based upon queries which can be many tables that those queries are based upon thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel get notified of the latest videos and for only two dollars a month you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos